Hello, this is Hiroshi Shaib, and this is another episode of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters, and this is our weekly update. I will be updating you on the Abun key as well as the Earth key, which both have not, as a recording of this episode, been solved. This week, we'll cover the news and events that have occurred between May 18th through the 23rd, uh, the 23rd being today, which is Thursday. So, uh, let's kind of get into it. So some site news, if you will. Official uh, Satoshi Treasure Hunters account on Twitter uh, had this fallen announcement on May 20th. Calling on hunters, we need footage of anything hunt related for a short TVP series soon. We'll send a random business card to anyone who sends us footage we use. Please note, phone footage must be horizontal to be usable. Thanks. So a number of different uh, accounts, including myself, uh, submitted some footage and we'll see where that where that goes. Uh, that, that's pretty much like game wise, the official account has tweeted out as far as like the bigger game information from the game makers. Uh, there has been a couple tweets concerning the, the keys, which I will uh, talk about when we get to that. But as far as anything, as far as news or any notices or anything like that, that's pretty much it. Uh, the update before that was about the SMS messaging. Uh, that hasn't been updated as far as the recording today, whether or not when that will be up. And there has been no f- further clue, or I should say key drops as of tonight. So as of today, Thursday, the only keys that are out currently right now are just the Ubun key and the Earth key. And as far as the Earth key goes, This is where we're still at with the Earth Key, where we just still have the image and everyone is attempting to, in all sorts of different manners, to try to figure out how to decrypt the chaotic field that is in front of the Russian uh, doll picture here. Uh, Thus far, as far as the various public groups, the Telegram chats, and including the official Telegram chat for the Satoshi Treasure Hunter, treasure hunt, uh, no one has solved this key. Uh, maybe a private group has done so, but I'm assuming, and that's a big quotations assume, that if someone did in fact, even if it's a private group or private individual did solve the key, that the game makers would know uh, by the fact of someone merely uh, getting through whatever passphrase or clicking on the URL that the key is uh, attached to would uh, disclose that it's been found. But thus far, this is where we're at with the Earth Key. Uh, Everyone seems to be kind of stuck right here trying to figure out how to decode this uh, image in front on top of the other image. Now let's get into the Ubun Key, which so far has been my, this key has been my favorite key to um, try to figure out. So we have this <clears throat> narrative piece, this clue uh, called Watch the Skies that is the hint for uh, the Ubunki. Uh I am doing a, a video, I'm still working on it, uh, uh, editing and, and reworking stuff about uh, text games or interactive fiction, which is a, one of the earliest game formats on, on computers uh, that has existed. Uh, your Oregon Trail is your Zork, if you heard of that. Uh, even though I'll talk a little bit about some of the recent text games. Uh, basically, uh, to just kind of sum up what a text game is, and I will go in more depth about them, is basically it's just a narrative piece, like a book, uh, this kind of a choose your own venture type of a game where you input the, the, the directions or information into the game to guide your way through as a player uh, into the whatever the game is whether it's your uh, on the trail on Oregon Trail or Zork where you're 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 kind of like on a hunt for objects and things uh, definitely Satoshi's Treasure has been highly influenced by those type of games it's, it's in the similar type of format uh, it has a similar style where there's a narrative piece like here like with the watch the skies and you garner clues and then you input the necessary information to move along into the game in almost a choose your own adventure type of style. 
So from this clue, uh, this narrative piece that we have called Watch the Skies, uh, there's a couple different hints, uh, as I talked about in the update, that hinted towards Twitter. One being the small azure bird here, highlighted, which I will read. Uh, after you walk along the path for a few minutes, you merge in a second clearing, where a small azure bird is perched on a single tree. His mouth is frozen open, and it continues to emit the same song you heard earlier. So the azure bird is the actual type of style of bird that is the icon for uh, Twitter. I personally was not aware of that personally. That's the, the name of the, the type of bird. So right off the bat, if you already knew that, or you Googled or you figured that out, you, you knew you were going to Twitter. But there is also, I guess you can say, a much clearer uh, clue, which is the second highlight piece here. So second sentence is grasping something in its claws, which upon closer inspection is a jigsaw puzzle. So right off the bat, we know we're dealing with a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, you take the puzzle piece and spend a few more minutes listening to the bird's song. It chirps and tweets some seems to be encoding a number, a big one by the sound of it. So, chirps and tweets. Chirps is the sound that birds make and so are tweets. Tweets is highly associated with Twitter. So we are kind of looking to the direction of Twitter to find the rest of the information for the clue to help us solve for the key. So we were given a series of numbers. Uh, this one highlighted here, which is the one I'll emphasize on. Uh, you know, I'll read the sentence and then go back to the number. Uh, you write the number in your notebook, 7C2BAC1D, and walk down a path opposite to the one that led you to this clearing. So there's two ways people went about it. Some knew right off the bat what that number was. Others, you know, Google and were able to find the answer. And it led you to two different places if you were to just to Google this first set of numbers. And let's go to those two different answers. One answer was going to lead you to directly to Bitcoin, in particular the Bitcoin blockchain, specifically to the first block ever mined um, by Satoshi Nakamoto the, called the Genesis block. And it's part of the information associated with uh, the Bitcoin block. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about that. I highly recommend uh, if you're part of this game to Google what Bitcoin is and all the different parts because clearly not only is it just simply not just part of the prize pool money, um, but obviously um, one thing we do know is that the uh, specific Bitcoin address that holds the bounty, if you will, is going to be a clue. Uh, and it, it'll be a key that's going to be revealed to us in a, in a way to allow us to obtain a key. A key different from the actual private key that's going to unlock the prize. Uh, but understanding a little bit more about the blockchain will help you understand um, maybe certain clues that lead you to other keys maybe further down in the game. In particular, the number associated that I highlighted over, the 7C number, leads you to what is called the knots. Now I know that that is not what I've have it highlighted there, but it's definitely is derived from this number called the knots right here. There's two zero eight three two three six eight nine three. Now you're wondering how is are those numbers associated? And if you still using Google, you would have gotten uh, some information from this particular article. So this article, and I apologize if I mispronounce the name, by uh, Jemina Alputha, uh, talks about how you can calculate uh, the hash for a, a Bitcoin block. So how to calculate the hash of a block in Bitcoin. Do you want to calculate the hash of a block yourself? Let's create a Python program. And in this article, she breaks down how you do that. And if you go through uh, the parameters here, version, previous block hash, the Merkle root, timestamp, difficulty, bits, and knots. And we'll kind of jump, drop down to the knots portion of this particular article. Now, I don't think this article is associated with the game. Um, I think it's just, you know, 
this is a big wide open space about cryptocurrency and it's just one more easily available little bits of information about Bitcoin that is just helpful as far as reference points if you will. So when we drop, drop down to the nonce, it talked about the nonce in a, dens, a decimal value and convert it into a little Edmund hex. Um, I personally don't know what that means um, and I don't want to convey wrong information, but basically it breaks down that if you take the nonce, which is a decimal value within the Bitcoin information and convert it into the, this format called a little Edmund hex, you get the same number and I'm going to highlight it, the hex value, that of uh, the clue that was given to us from the Watch the Skies little narrative piece. So this got to people thinking about, oh, well, that's cool, that's neat, that is associated with the Bitcoin um, block uh, genesis. And then they looked at the other numbers and see if they can derive the same bit of information by taking the numbers and either converting it to hex value or reversing it back to decimal value. But when they were looking at the numbers, it, it didn't quite compute those other numbers. And so they didn't really think much about this uh, little narrative clue, but perhaps we should have. And I will get the second way that people were able to find information. So if you were to just go straight to Twitter and input uh, this here, the clue, you would have gotten the Devon, the handle of Devon, and it had the puzzle piece, um, which I talked about in the um, update video from last week about the Ubunki. Uh, and it had, eventually people were able to, from here, derive uh, information for four additional Twitter handles and there was a bit of a slow go for a couple of days about that until somebody came up with the uh, information to find eventually what turns out to be 50 puzzle pieces and uh, I will show you what those puzzle pieces are as well as what that puzzle made but again it's going to be 50 Twitter handles and each of the birds little tweets um, not only were deprived from the numbers from the clue and with these special handles, but they all had puzzle pieces and these pictures associated with them. So on that Telegram uh, official channel, uh, Ivik Melsic, uh, he went and he was like, okay, so as you can see this highlighted here, that's the first knot on which the hex uh, from the first clue, the 7C number, uh, was derived from was from the Bitcoin block genesis. Well, all those other ones must be nonsense as well. It's just a matter of figuring it out. And he did. What he did was he went through, and I'll show you how. He went to the details of the first 50 blocks uh, using uh, something called the Bitcoin block chain explorer. And what he did was he went through the 51st blocks and he looked at all the different nonces and looked for their association to the numbers that we were derived from. And even though the numbers that we were given weren't immediately jumping out as being uh, values to nonces, he was able to figure out their association. And what he associated them with was uh, a particular conversion that was done using a formula, a mathematical formula called the Hosfeder figure figure sequence. I am not going to even, I, I barely survive algebra, okay, uh, figured out that this was a sequence that um, that the game makers were using to kind of encode or shift the values of the nonces into a format that associated with these different Twitter handles that he found um, on Twitter and there were 50 of them and they all had the puzzle pieces so he knew he was in the, the right area. So let's go back to so 
after getting the, the 50, going through the 50, uh, going through the first 50 blockchain uh, blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain and getting the nonces, using the um, Hasta formula, he was able to derive uh, the different Twitter handles. Now I've already collected um, all the different um, Twitter handles here on a list called uh, the Abon Key, um, which you can subscribe to if you like. And as you can see, these numbers here. They each have a puzzle piece, a picture, uh, this Twitter handle with Troy and the number, as well as right here, this hashtag uh, that would be associated as a hex value for the nonces that are associated with the, the Bitcoin um, blockchain. Now, I don't know how uh, Ivan was able to take, you know, I don't know how to reverse engineer it, if you will, of how he was able to take the Bitcoin uh, nonces, this figure, and and, and obtain the, the numbers per se for the each of the Twitter handles. I just know that, that, that something was done and has been verified being, you know, truthful. These are not fake uh, puzzle pieces or anything like that. This is actually uh, the solution to the, this particular part of the clue for the key. And again, uh, I do have all 50 uh, Twitter handles for you to be able to uh, maybe you know or understand the formulas for you, for you to figure out for yourself and derive the same answer. Now, that was one way to, to get here, <laughs> to get to these uh, Twitter handles, to, to get these puzzle pieces. Another way, which hasn't been fully disclosed, but it's been talked about within the, the public groups, was that somebody was able to figure out using the Twitter's API, because everyone knows Twitter, and they're trying to search and derive information. Like, from the five uh, Twitter handles that everyone was able to find, uh, you could figure out, you know, when the, the account was created, uh, if it tweeted before, you know, the hashtags, and trying to figure out the basic information from the Twitter handle, but people were like, well, how can I search and look for Twitter handles similar to this? And people are doing all sorts of different uh, search patterns, if you will, and someone was able, through the use of the Twitter API, there was some kind of bug, was able to derive the same solution. And I guess you might say more clear, simpler fashion because of this bug within the Twitter handle. And this is the other tweet that the official account and, and Eric tweeted about. So on the uh, official account as well as Eric's account, uh, they tweeted about how this other individual uh, found the same uh, puzzle pieces or found the same Twitter handles. So he said that someone solved one of our uh, Toshi, Toshi treasure clues by finding and exploiting a novel bug in the Twitter API. Insanely cool. Uh, we'll talk more about it once Twitter two edges and responds and he can disclose the particular bug. So not only what did this person, you know, find a novel solution, um, but they might actually get some money from Twitter from exploiting this particular bug and uh, finding all these um, Twitter handles. And so with the Twitter handles, you have these puzzle pieces, you, you, you know, you download the pu puzzle pieces and I will show you the puzzle pieces. So here are the 50 puzzle pieces. I'm just gonna go through them very quickly. They're very colorful, very beautiful, and using Photoshop or some other type of imaging program, you can piece them together and when you get to the end of all 50 and put them together. I personally am going to take some cardstock and um, print these and, oops, overshot and I'm gonna make my own personal uh, puzzle here uh, but this is a solution you get a soda can that has their logo on it and all this imagery with potential clues and we'll get a, a little bit of a closer look um, to this particular soda can but these puzzle pieces as you can see here are composed to make this image so this is a, a much closer look at the soda can and as you can see there is a renaissance portrait 
um, some icons, fireworks. To the left here, you can see this Morse code on the edge of the soda can. A little uh, sticker here, some more fireworks, uh, some icons for some um, brands, more Morse code. And then over here in some English lettering, I'm going to flip the image. Now you also have some Chinese characters on the soda can as well. Sorry about that. Um, you have some English lettering down here and some more Morse code. Now the Morse code that is on the soda can is all the same. It's the same. So the Morse code on the soda can is the same across the board. And then you have this English lettering right here, which we will get into. Uh, but the Morse code actually leads directly to a URL. So let's look at the URL first, and then we'll talk about um, the more like the Morse code and the URL. So let's do that first. So what you do is you take the Morse code. I'm, I'm using the Morse code translator. You translate it. It gives you the URL. And if you want to have a nice show of it, uh, here's what it sounds and looks like. And it gives us the passphrase. We have to enter a passphrase to decrypt this page. So what is the passphrase? So we have to kind of look at the clues that were given to us from the soda can. Well, one of those clues is the Renaissance picture of the death of Julius Caesar here, which could mean the Caesar cipher, which is one of the most famous uh, code ciphers that there is in the world. Um, so that might be a hint. That's one probability. It's not the only probability, but I would think for simplification purposes, I would is bet it has to do something with the Caesar cipher. And then you have the more a little bit more difficult understanding, which is the English characteristics that were on the bottom portion of the can which was a poem, and this poem is called uh, Goodbye at the Yellow Crane Tower by uh, Li Ba. Now, there's various English translations to that, and it's a little difficult to translate from Chinese to, to English. There's different um, methodologies. Um, here's one particular translation that I'm getting from this website, and I have a, a link in the show notes, where they're just no no sense of poetry whatsoever, no kind of in interpretation, just straight up what the words could be. And it's like, old chap, west departs the yellow crane tower, mist, flowers third month down, the young zoo, single sail distant sea, blue emptiness limitless, only sea long river, sky horizon flow. There's, that's, that's garbage. <laughs> it's no, that's not poetry. So if you go down here to the actual English words, which is at the yellow tower in the west, you get the translation of one of the translations for the yellow crane um, poem. So at the yellow tower in the west, my old friend says farewell. In the mist of flowers of spring, he goes down to Yangzhou. Lonely sail, a distant shadow, vanish in blue ebonies. As I see is the great river flowing into the far horizon. And this is where it gets a little tricky because is it this translation or is it this translation here? Uh, you have left me behind, old friend at the yellow crane tower. 
on our way to visit Yangshu. In the misty month of flowers, your, your sail a single shadow becomes one with the blue sky. Till now I see only the river on his way to heaven. And then this person who wrote this site um, has their own little translation, uh, complementive translation, and an interpretive one. So when you're dealing with a past phrase and you're trying to do a translation, exact wording is kind of necessary. It might not be like this particular translation, or maybe it's just the title of the play, or just the single sentence that we have on the can. Um, people are running all sorts of different um, brute force password uh, phrases, if you will, into that particular URL to try to obtain the key. Now, one of the more um, public uh, clans, the Magellan clan, has a write-up, and this portion I'm going to get into where uh, they do provide their information pretty much from the same source I did, which was the public telegram channel. Uh, they talk about the different icons that are on the can. One is for the image for the Yazoo University. The other is the Ling Flying Tiger Prototetics Company, the fireworks company, and there's also like a lot of fireworks on the can as well. Uh, Union Pay, which is a financial service. The China Uocom Corporation here, uh, Corvettes, which is a um, defunct music comp uh, record selling place from the, like the East Coast and the Midwest, uh, Rabbit, which is a clothing brand. All of these could be potential hints to the passphrase um, for um, that particular URL. So that's it. That's where we are as far as the Ubuntu key. Um, we are, or should I say, myself and everybody, all the different clans, both public and private so far as the recording of this um, episode, are here on the landing page um, to decrypt the passphrase. And various individuals and groups are trying to uh, derive or figure out what the passphrase is to decrypt um, and either get another clue or actually to find the key for the Bundu key. So I'd like to thank you for watching um, this episode of Satoshi Treasure Hunters. I will um, of course do another episode if another key drops and we'll have another clue day. Uh, if a solution is derived from any of the keys, whether it be the Ubuntu key or the Earth key, I will also, you know, pop up and do another video. I do have two incoming videos that are not necessarily directly um, directly tied to the hunt itself. Um, one is about PGP and the other is about an uh, explainer of, about what PGP is and the other is what um, text game, text-based games or interactive fiction games are and how they've influenced the Satoshi treasure hunt so that way um, it kind of gives you an understanding of the type of game um, that uh, the game makers are making and maybe help you understand the various clues that are um, available for the different keys. So that is it. I'm Horosha Shive. This is Toshi Treasure Hunters. And on with the hunt.